In this module, I will walk you through customizing the QuickBooks environment. What I mean by this is that we can modify the preferences to change how QuickBooks behaves when we're completing different tasks to our liking. We can also set up and modify the functionality available for different users who need to access our QuickBooks file. Another form of customization you will definitely use in QuickBooks are the accounts you end up using for your business. I will walk you through each of these things and, at the end, you will be able to practice creating a new account in your chart of accounts of QuickBooks on your own. In our first section, let's jump into modifying QuickBooks preferences. You want to go through and look at all of the preferences before you get started because there are some things you're going to want to turn on or off to make QuickBooks a little bit easier for you as you're getting things set up. Now, as I noted when we went through the Easy Step interview in Module 2, you could go back and change every one of those answers you put in there. Most of those answers are going to be in the preferences. So I want to take a few minutes and go through all the preferences with you. We obviously won't have time to hit them all because there's so many, but we'll hit the more important ones that you'll likely use or benefit from. And if there's some you want to come back and look at later, you can certainly feel free to do that. So let's get started. All the preferences are located under the Edit menu. And you'll see preferences at the very bottom of the list here. So let's click that. The way this screen works is that you have these options on the left, like over here. And typically, when you come in, it's on the general option automatically, like this. And each one of these will have a tab that says My Preferences and also one that says Company Preferences. You'll want to look under both when you're looking for your options. I want to start at the very top with the one that says Accounting and just go through a couple of things with you. And I'm going to start on the Company Preferences tab. There's actually three things here that would be of interest to you. The first one is a selection called Use Account Numbers. And to demonstrate how this works, I'm going to cancel this for a moment. What we're going to do a little bit later in this particular module is we're going to go through the chart of accounts and get that all set up. So as I explained in the previous module, the chart of accounts is a place where you can find all of your accounts in QuickBooks and it's located right here on your home screen. Let me show you what it currently looks like now and then I'll turn that option on for the account numbers to see what it looks like then. So let's click it. Right now your chart of accounts is set up by type over here. And you can see when the type is the same for certain accounts, it will be listed alphabetically like this, starting from here and going down. Some people like to use general ledger numbers. You'll notice there aren't any right now, but we're going to turn these on. We're going to go back into preferences under edit hit preferences, go under accounting, company preferences, and select use account numbers. I'm going to check the box and click OK. And now you'll see that you have general ledger numbers down here on the left. Now this is just an option. You don't have to use them. Like I said, if you'd rather not, then they're going to be set up alphabetical by type. But right now, these are listed by account number as such. Let me go back in here and go back to Preferences. Go to Company Preferences. On the same screen, there's another option that says Use Class Tracking for Transactions. This will allow you to actually take each transaction and segment it by a different list. Now, here's what I mean by that. Right now, you can run reports on the company as a whole. You can see if you're making money, losing money, all the numbers in all your different accounts. But what if you need to break your business down even further? For example, maybe you have two different departments in your organization and you need to run a profit or loss per department. Or maybe you have two locations and you'd like to run a profit and loss for each location. That could be your class list. If you turn this feature on, what will happen is each transaction will have an extra field 
and there will be a drop down for you to pick the class. The class can be any list you'd like to set up. Like I said, it could be locations, it could be departments, whatever you'd like that list to be. And then you could run reports based on those. Not every business will use this feature, but it's a great little feature if you need it. For this demonstration, I'll keep this class tracking off for now. The other thing I want to mention on the screen is down here, where you have the option to close the books. If you're not familiar with this term, this is what happens when you close the books. Typically in accounting, you close the books at the end of every year, especially if the size of your organization is small. However, for larger organizations that need to run monthly reports, they may close the books on a monthly basis. So let's say you've closed the books through the end of December, and later on you realize that you misposted something prior to your year-end date, let's say in November. You can't just go delete or modify that entry. What you need to do is make an offsetting entry in the current period, and that's the correct way to do your accounting. Otherwise, your reports will change for periods that have already been closed. If anyone using those reports goes into QuickBooks and sees that the reports have now changed, they will likely not be very happy. The QuickBooks software does not close the books for you, nor does it warn you. You have to know to come to this screen. You would set a closing date in here by clicking this. And this is where you would put in your closing date in this field over here. So if you tried making a change before the date you specify, it would give you a pop-up and warn you. You can also put in a password down here so that the pop-up would also prompt you to enter a password if you're trying to make a change before the closing date. For the purposes of this instruction, I'm not going to set a password or a close date, but I highly recommend that you consider doing this for the companies that you are working on. Just remember to save the password somewhere safe. Going to hit cancel here. Let's continue down this list and focus on the more important preferences here. Let's go down to the general option. And if you ever make any changes on any screen, it will ask you if you'd like to save them, just so you know. I'm going to click the My Preferences tab. And remember, this is the one that pops up automatically when you first come into the Preferences option, okay? Everyone will want to check this box right here. Pressing Enter moves between fields. So I'm going to select that. If you've used QuickBooks before, one of the things you'll find is that when you start typing in a form, let's say you happen to be in an invoice, for example, and you hit the Enter key thinking you're going to move to the next field, you actually save and close that transaction. And it'll really confuse you if you don't know what you're looking for. In this case, you'll notice that I can press Enter now or the Tab key to move between fields. By selecting this option, I can now either press the Enter key or the Tab key to move between fields. There's a lot of other little options here, like do you want it to beep when you record a transaction? Things like that. You might want to turn off your pop-up messages for products and services that uh, Intuit wants to try to sell you. I'll turn these off for this instruction. I'm also going to select this one here. Automatically recall last transaction for this name. What this does is, let's say you write a check and you make it payable to your electric company and you fill in all the information on the check. The next time you write your check and you pull in that same name, it will pre-populate the whole check with the last entry and then you can change anything you need. It's a great time saver and it keeps your accounting consistent. You may also want to use today's date as default. That means that on every new transaction you create, you'll have the current date pre-populated, but you can change it if you need to. My preference to avoid date entry errors is to use the last date entered as my default, meaning it will populate the new transaction with the same date as whatever you last entered. So I will keep the default date option as is. Moving along the left here, I'm going to go down to Items and Inventory, and I'll save my changes. I'm going to click the Company Preferences tab this time. If you remember in the Easy Step interview, one of the questions was, do you track inventory, yes or no? If you say yes, which we ended up doing in the previous module, 
these will be checked already and they will actually show up in your home screen. So if I close this and go to my home screen, you'll notice that I have options for purchase orders, receiving inventory, and entering bills against inventory. Let me go back into preferences again. Jobs and estimates is the next one on the list. Again, I'll choose the company preferences tab. If you happen to work with jobs and construction as a prime example, then you'll want to track somewhere in QuickBooks that certain jobs might be pending, they might be in progress, those types of things. And you might have different terminology for these jobs. And here's where you can change that by these names over here. If you remember in the Easy Step interview, it did ask if we want to create estimates. Here's these options selected right here. You could say yes or no. It also asked us if we wanted to do progress invoicing. And again, here are the options we selected. Let's now scroll down to payments. And let's go to the company preferences tab, which it's already on. There's one option here that I just want you to be aware of. It's called use undeposited funds as a default deposit to account. Now this might not make sense right now, but it will later on when we talk about receiving payments from customers. If we have this turned on, all funds received from customers that we record will go directly to the account called undeposited funds. If we uncheck this, we'll be able to choose the account we'd like to put the money into. I will explain this in more detail when we talk about working with customer payments, but for now, we will unselect this option. Let's now go down to Payroll and Employees. I'm going to click Save. We'll close the window for a sec. One of the questions it also asked us in the Easy Step interview was, do you want to use the payroll feature, yes or no? Here I can turn on full payroll options. I can choose no payroll, or you can see some of the other options down here. If you want to see employees listed by first name, by last name, there's just a lot of different options here. Let's go ahead and stop this video at this particular point. And what I want to do is come into part two, and we will continue talking about some of these preferences. In this section, we're continuing where we left off with changing our preferences in QuickBooks. In case you did not watch part one, I recommend that you do so before watching this section. Let's go ahead and look at the reminders next. Let's hit company preferences as we're currently on. And what you see here is a list of things that QuickBooks will remind you that you have to take care of. You can show the summary, the list, or don't remind me. The summary basically means that instead of listing out each individual check to print, for example, it will just say checks to print on your summary, along with the number of checks and total amount of those checks. If you say show the list, you will see each of these ones individually on your reminders list. For some of these, you'll also notice that you can be reminded of X amount of days ahead of time and you can change that number by clicking the fields in here. The way how the reminders work in QuickBooks is that when you open your company file on a day in which the reminder is due, a window will appear automatically, listing all of the things you want to be warned about. In order for this to happen, you have to go to the tab My Preferences and select Show Reminders List when opening a company file. You can also go to the Reminders window by going under the Company menu over here. So we're going to say yes to saving. I'm going to go to the company menu and select reminders over here. Let's go back to preferences. The next thing down here are your reports and graphs. Let's go into company preferences. We're going to be looking at a lot of reports a bit later on. But one thing I want you to notice is that your reports are automatically shown on an accrual basis, as indicated over here. And if you don't know what that means, it basically means that it will show income as soon as you create an invoice, for example, whether it's paid or not. 
and it will show your expenses when you put in the bill as an expense already occurring, even though you may not have actually paid that bill. Sales and customers is the next one down. You'll notice that if you're under the My Preferences tab, as such, there's a couple additional features you can activate in QuickBooks. For example, you have a feature called Time Cost in QuickBooks. What this basically means is that if you incur expenses that you need to be reimbursed for you, you can actually have QuickBooks pop up and remind you of those expenses when you're on an invoice by putting in a customer name and job, for example. And we'll see how that works when we start talking about invoicing. If we go under Company Preferences, you'll want to make sure that the feature Warn About Duplicate Invoice Numbers is selected over here. What this does is that it will warn you if you've already entered the same invoice number, which is useful in preventing double posting errors. Now looking at sales tax below, if you recall when we went through the Easy Step interview, we noted that we do want to track sales tax, like GST, QST, and HST. And this has been turned on under Preferences because we made that selection. If you ever want to turn off the sales tax features, you just need to go here and click No under the Company Preferences. I'm now going to skip down to Send Forms and go to the Company Preferences tab. One of the features you'll find in QuickBooks is that you have the ability to email a form to a customer, a vendor, etc. For example, I might create an invoice for a customer, and instead of sticking it in the mail, I might actually just click a button to send them an email, and it will be attached. If I go under Basic Invoice and click Current Default and click Edit, you can see the generic cover sheet that goes with it. You can also see that it pulls in certain fields into this form, like the person's first name and last name. This is taken from what's already in QuickBooks. And if you want to change any of the verbiage in the email, you can modify it just by typing over what's in this box. If you want to add another field to this email, you can find it under this drop down at the bottom, insert field. You can also go in and add your own templates and create your own forms if you want to do that. I'm going to click cancel, close this. Let's continue down the list. And let's select time and expenses. We're not going to save, so I'll select no. This is the last one I wanted to mention to you on the list. Remember that in the Easy Step interview, when it asked, would you like to track the time in QuickBooks? You could say yes or no here. Since we selected yes to this question in that interview, yes is already selected here. In here, you can also select the first day of your work week. You'll also see down here that if you have some expenses, you can mark them as billable automatically, or you can have it track reimbursed expenses as income by selecting this option. Now that's really all of your options here that I wanted to go over with you. As I'm sure you noticed, there's a couple I purposely skipped over, mainly because it's unlikely you'll need to modify these. However, for whichever organization you're working for in real life, there are some features you may want to activate. So it is worthwhile to look through all of these preferences before working on your company file for the first time. The ones I told you to select were done mainly because they will likely offer you the greatest benefit when using QuickBooks every day. I'm going to head and click OK. I'm going to click close on this and I can now go back to my home screen. This wraps up the preferences part of this particular module. In the next section, we're going to talk about how to work with users. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see more QuickBooks Canada videos from Simon Says It, click over there. And click over there to upgrade to the full QuickBooks Canada course.